Right, Samir, you have been teaching about three purification of the... Yes. What are the three purification? The three purification is... First is the physical purification. Purification of the body. How does The body purification, you have to understand the need of the body. What are the need of the body? Food is the first need of the body. Food should be disciplined. As I told, I told you earlier, the food should be light, it should give you energy, but it should not give you excitement, it should not make you sleepy, it should make, give you energy, not sleepy. Anything which, uh, if you eat and you feel like uh, lying down on the bed is not a good food for meditator. Food should be such that it should instant give you energy for more work. So that is physical discipline, yes. purification of the body. Body needs good food. Exercise. If you don't do exercise, your body will cannot remain healthy for long. Some sort of exercise is must. We have to drink a lot of water. My teaching is that now you reduce your solid food and increase the quantity of liquid food. That's the thumb rule. You should drink more fruit juice, milk, curd and less solid food. That's the general rule. And first of all, the mind. Mind. Then in the physical also, there is a the, the need of the body is food, sleep, you have to regulate your sleep, exercise and sex also. Sex is a next, after the food, the next need is sex. After people are fed, the second desire in a young body and healthy mind comes after sex. So sex has to be also be taken care. You cannot indulge too much in sex. And you cannot too much suppress the sex. There should be healthy sex. That keeps you healthy for a long time. So all these things is physical discipline. First discipline of body. And then second discipline is the discipline of the mind. Mind is made of the thoughts. Thoughts is the food of the mind. As, as the bread and uh, butter is the food of the body. So the thought is the food of the mind. So when you read, you should be careful. Whether that food is suitable for your mind, you should not read everything. You should not watch every program which comes on TV. 95% programs are not good for your mental health because they are full of violence and sex. So you have to discipline thoughts also. What you read, what you watch, what you talk, that will purify your mind. And you should make good, make good company. People who are inspired, people who look for, have who want to enhance their quality of life. If you make company of such people, they will purify your mind. If you make company with somebody who is looking for money and sex and drugs, they will, they will make you also influenced by their thoughts. Thought is very infectious. So you have to be very careful when you choose your friend. So you also teach about five disciplines. Yes. So what are they? There, the, I call it <coughs> see, five disciplines. The first big discipline is purification. The purification is three parts, body, mind and feeling. In heart, you should not have any anger for anybody, jealousy for anybody, violence for anybody. That will purify your heart. You should be generous, kind. You should forgive people. That will purify your heart. So this is the third discipline, purification of the body, mind and heart. Then after purification, there is a meditation. Because without purification, you will not establish in your meditation. If you don't discipline your food, don't discipline your sleep, your meditation will be disturbed. So first, discipline these things, physical elements, then meditation will become easy. So second meditation, regularly, one hour, every day, we recommend to everybody to who are a spiritual seeker to meditate for at least for one hour. That is second discipline. So physical discipline, the suddhi, sadhana, then third is uh, the sanskar, the habits. Yeah, yeah, you are a slave of your habit. If you start drinking tea every day on bed, you, you cannot wake up without bed tea. So you make yourself slave of your habit. So when you make habit, be very careful because it's going to become your second nature. So be very careful when you do things. So that is sanskar, that's it. Following good habit. Like when you wake up 
drink two glass of plain water for my hygiene. Like you drink, lot of people drink beti. I drink two glass of warm water in the morning. So that's good for health. That gives a good bowel movement. So all those things makes good habits. So that is a sanskar. I teach that sanskar. So suddhi sadhana sanskar then satsang. Satsang is as I told you that we mind is very infectious. Thoughts are very infectious. If you talk to somebody who is disturbed, your mind will also get disturbed. If you talk to somebody who is very greedy, he will indirectly put some thought in your mind, and you will start also want to buy new car, new house, all those things. Because we are always bombarded by other thoughts. So I teach people uh, to make good company. Uh, as you you don't read any book, you select your book. I, as you don't eat anything. You select your food. The same way, you should not mix up with everybody. You should select your friends and also your enemy. You should select you know, the quality and that because they are going to change your life. And the fifth is samadhi. Samadhi is the ultimate enlightenment. And for samadhi, one has to learn the habit of giving because in samadhi you have to give everything. So that way, charity is very important. That you should develop the habit of giving things. Then only one day you will be able to give your give up your mind, give up your ego. If you don't, if you cannot give a, a couple of meal to somebody, if you cannot give five dollar to some person, how can you suppose that you will give your ego one day? So charity in every religion, they teach charity because that will give you a good habit of detaching yourself from things. So like charity, silence, these are the food for samadhi. Aloneness, living in the nature, going to the retreats, meditation camps, all those things will help with the samadhi. Samadhi is the ultimate. That's the five disciplines. So during the speech you were mentioning about that once a person is about to die, that time basically they get enlightenment. Yes, it is unfortunate that most of the people will become enlightened. Majority of them become enlightened at the time of that day. Because in the, during their lifetime, they are so much engaged and so much conditioned by the, by the glamour of the life. Life has nothing, but it has a dream stuff. It promises so much. So people are glamorized by the promise of the life. So they don't get time for meditation. And even if they meditate, they don't do meditation totally. So that death is a very dramatic time and it is a very critical time. At the time of death, all your dreams are shattered and uh, all your sweet dreams and all your attachments, you are attached to your children, attached to your family, attached to your house, attached to the car, people get attached with things, material things. So the time of death, you see that you are losing all attachment. Now you cannot take away your car. Now you cannot take away your bank balance. Now you can take away your beloved. So that is a very critical time. And if one has practiced some meditation and awareness, at that time the master will come and push that drop your mind. And if one is courageous enough and he can drop his mind, he can become enlightened. A lot of people become enlightened at the time. So what happens with the masters when they leave their body? Mm. Are they reincarn do they reincarnate again or they just exist? It depends. It depends. If somebody is not fully enlightened, he can take many lives. And somebody if is enlightened and he wants to take life, he can take one life, one more life. But, but only if he wants and he take a promise that uh, decision that I be, I have to take a life, then he can take one more, only one more life. After final enlightenment, only one more life is possible. Uh, but we don't believe in incarnation, that uh, only God is incarnated in form of Krishna or Muhammad or Jesus. We don't believe in that. Uh, everybody uh, is potential to become enlightened and anybody can become enlightened. I read somewhere about the Osho, it's written that we stay this planet. What does this mean? Uh, what, what is it? There's so many mistakes, I think, maybe in, uh, somewhere that 
Osho. What about visited this planet? Visited this planet, yes. During this planet. Yeah, yeah. During RT, yes. there are some Adi, this is written that o Osho never born, never yes. died, only visited this planet between 11 December 1931 to 19 January 1999. So, what does this mean? It means that it means that Osho is not a physical body. He was never born because his consciousness was always there and never died. He has never died. His only body he has dropped his body. He's alive, he's still alive. He visited this planet in physical form. In physical body, he was there for 59 years, between 31 and 1990. He was a guest and visited this planet in physical body. But he has dropped his body and he's still his consciousness is there. We feel him in several ways. When I was giving sannyas, I was feeling him very strongly in my body. And people were also feeling. That's why people were in ecstasy. That's why when I touched them, they lie down. And that's why they were dancing with such a madness. Because it is also amazing. So we feel him every night. Whenever there is sannyas, whenever I met, conduct meditation camp, I feel him in different ways. So he's alive. He is alive. So why do we have this mala? It is a symbol of sannyas. Like every master at the time of initiation, he gives some symbol. Uh, you, you know the Sikha, Guru Nanak gave them the turban and the kripan. So they have five symbols of their Sikhism. Buddha used to give a begging ball, that was a symbol of his initiation. He called them bhikkhu and give them uh, ochre robe and begging ball. So most of the Hindu master gives mantra. So those gifts at the time of initiation is very important. The master gives you a mantra, it becomes very powerful. The master gives you a baking ball, it looks like an uh, insignificant earthen ball, but it becomes very powerful because it carries master love and energy. So every Buddhist monk has to respect his baking ball because it is a gift of the master, symbol of his sannyas. So similarly, the Osho gives this mala at the time of sannyas. Every master chooses his own way. A lot of Sufi master gives tabis, they, sometimes they give mantra. Some master gives you a handkerchief. That's a, a symbol of initiation, that you are initiated. So every master chooses his own medium, how he is going to work upon you. Osho has selected this mala. So this is a symbol of sannyas and it keeps us connected to the Master. So have you ever seen Osho reciting any mantra? No. Or giving any mantra? To no, him? Osho was, has taught about mantra and he, in several books, there is a book uh, called Shiva Sutra. Uh, if, you, if you are interested, I will, uh, if you are interested in the mantra, then I will tell you to read the 10th lecture of Shiva Sutra, where Bhagavan has taught the science of the mantra. So he knew the science of the mantra, but uh, I have never seen him practicing any mantra and he was not giving initiation by mantra. He knew the science of mantra, he has talked about the science of mantra. Anybody who wants to do some experiment, there is a guidance. But as a such, in initiation, he didn't advise us to do a chant any mantra. Do you do any mantra? Uh, we don't do any mantra. But we do some prayer like we did this uh, evening uh, prayer. So we had some prayer. So we do practice those prayers in the morning and in the evening. Um, but not in a form of mantra, but more in a form of a prayer.